All right, so we're going to be going through a bit of a catch-up playing. So we are going now to Aquanim and Google Frog versus Skazi and Yogg-Sothoth. And this... All right. So, let's try to follow what's happening. Okay, Amphib, Light Vehicles versus Jump Bots and Cloaky Bots. Well, looks like... Well, not surprisingly... Actually, no, Skazi and Yogg-Sothoth actually looks like they got a pretty good position early on. But Google Frog and Aquanim have entrenched themselves, and Skazi and Yogg-Sothoth can't really deal with this. So right now, I would say... Uh, should I like, make it audible? So this is about 8 minutes into the game so far, and... Nice entrenched position from both sides, since neither one went for aquatic units, and firewalkers, there we go. Try to break the opening, but yeah, neither one for aquatic units of any description, so I'm not sure... What are they gonna do besides just try to tear up the choke point, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. This guy's in out there are doing a pretty good job of it as well. But not apparently good enough. Why is the camera move got to be tied to frame rate? Anyway. Yeah, it looks like at this point, Vokershin's just falling apart. But yeah, Skazi and Yogg-Sothoth taking an early lead from here, and oh, a proxy gunship as well. It looks like the gunship attack is getting the next thing to come in. And that... Oh! Did they get rid of the commander? Okay, so Yogg-Sothoth lost their commander at one point. And Skazi, on the other hand, probably still has theirs. Okay, there we go. And now we've caught up. So it looks like Skazi and Yogg-Sothoth are ahead. Or at least were ahead, but now the western side's been taken over by Aquanim. Slowly but surely turning them apart with Wolverines, and that will be... That's a nice open area, too. The Firewalker, however, seems to have done a pretty good job of it. Making sure to deal with everything that's there. And Google Frog did go for aquatic units. Did go for the Amphib Factory. Actually, it occurs to me that was the first thing that was built. I don't know why I said they didn't go for aquatic units, because that was one of the first factories built. That was plopped. I'm with three on ready. Okay. So at least it's not too bogged down by the choke points. You, you all caught up, Kane? Just just finished catching up. Yeah, I'm really curious to see uh, how this moves from here. Like you mentioned, typically we see a lot more consolidation at these bottlenecks. It's really interesting that, that Aquaman would have plopped light vehicles here. That's something I don't see very often. I think maybe just once before. Well, Wolverines are very good at dealing with that light defense issue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, of course, Firewalker's getting rid of it as well. So this map is turning out a bit more dynamic than usual, just on account of the fact that the players are actually accounting for it. <laughs> And they're making sure to work around it, rather than trying to just march headlong into it with a shield ball. Yep, we're seeing a lot of, uh, sort of counter-defensive units. Snipers, Grizzlies, Buoys, Rapiers, I see an Impaler. So yeah, certainly more focused on clearing park than building it up. Mm-hmm, although, what I'm curious about is why these Rapiers are- Okay, so let's say, why are these Rapiers here? They aren't doing anything as they start doing stuff. And, yeah, that should be a decent amount of damage. Thankfully, only two rapier missiles were used to get rid of that metal extractor because that wasn't much. And now at this point, this is extremely thr oh well, it would be threatening for the razor, but it looks like Skazi is not paying attention here. They really should be because that that is an unfortunate loss. They could have moved those back and just gone behind the mountain. Mm. Unfortunately, they did not. They do, however, know what's going on, but that scouting's good. Scouting's good. I, I cannot fault information. It's just. They could have taken the metal extractor in the process, with no risk. Which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah. And three rapiers is a pretty expensive scout. I, I feel like it could have done more damage with oh, just yeah, one thousand metal? metal extractors. Oh yeah, definitely. That's not. If you want to scout, use a blastwing or a gnat. Uh oh. Here the snipers getting flushed out by the darts. This is a beautiful play. Yeah, one that is. Here that's to clean up. Excellent. Man, that's another thing with light vehicles. They are very good at cheap scouting. That's a very nice thing well, that's for them. That's certainly true. Because that's... I mean, that's what they do. They just... They rush in everywhere. And in darts... Yeah, darts are cheap. Of course, dirtbags would have worked as well, but... 
shield ball is not what we want to go for. Not what anyone wants to go for. Nobody wants to go for shields, which I'm fine with in this map. They tend to be things that bog stuff down. At this point, I guess we kind of have, in a sense, mobile pork between the Wolverines and the Impalers. It does mean the Southwest is going to be difficult to deal with. The Northeast being broken systematically. And that sniper doing its job. Oh. These Ravens spine out the Geo in the northeast. That commander uh, ah, in a bit matter. of a hot situation. That Geo was irrelevant. If you looked at the energy economy, they were accessing before the Geo was destroyed. So at this point, it makes no difference. Uh, they weren't even using it all for overdrive. So I can't I can't say they did much. I mean, it's nice to have. I trust Gazi will want to rebuild it at some point, but it could have been far worse. Yeah, kind of a silly thing to build, but uh, I was more more interested in the fact that now Google Frog has a fix on Skazi's commander. Are they going to take advantage of it, though? That's the thing. I mean, they do have a position. There's, no the razors. There's no razors. Yeah. They These bombers are, uh, aren't looking too active at the moment. I'm kind of surprised by that. Google Frog has these bombers in the air and hasn't been using them as much as as much as I might like to see. Yeah, especially Although when the ducks seem to be doing the job. They are, but especially when you consider the economy right now with 22 metal, losing a commander is a big deal. I mean, that's not to mention the reclaim that would be lost, but still, losing a commander, that that's about a quarter of their economy when you discount, well, okay, without reclaim. Yeah, if you got rid of both commanders, that would be a good third of the economy in total taken out. And scouting in for, re for recursion, we do see what, well, they see what's going on. We already know, of course. We are the Omniscient Spectators! And... Well... This looks like it's probably gonna finish up. But yeah, it looks like this game actually was kind of dynamic. But unfortunately we didn't get to see most of it. But that's... I mean... Yeah. It's more like, yeah, unfortunately really the game didn't start early. early. Mm. So we just move on to Winter's Finals. <laughs> because, I mean, <laughs> if they'd started around... Because it took a little bit longer than the other one. This is more what I expected as far as this map goes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, unfortunately, due to delays, we get to see the last half of this game where Recursion had taken a pretty decisive advantage to begin with and is now... Looks like they're clearing house pretty well. I don't... I mean, the sniper is there. does help. Not doing much. In theory, it helps. Practice that grizzly is just out of the way. So I'd say at this point that it's really just a matter of it's cleanup time. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice tick though. Heard of a couple of Wolverines that put themselves a little bit too far forward out of position. And another nice tick, but not as nice. So Akinum at this point just yeah, that's that's darts. Trying to win out with darts, because that's might as well, honestly. I mean, you'd find the sharpshooter, you'd be able to tear apart the wind generators, no problem. And that should break it, I think. No, never mind. But it should at least reveal everything. At least they know what's going on. If it doesn't break it, it at least damages it slightly. Recursion at this point is just just picking apart the few remaining forces between the bombers and the grizzly and the, the uh, clearly superior eco. Just a matter of time until uh, Yogg's top and Skazi get dismantled here. Yeah, there's. I don't see any major mistakes that Recursion's doing. If they're doing mistakes, they're minor ones. I mean, the only thing I could see that Recursion's doing that's exploitable is they are mono spamming. Uh, they are trying to just take it. Oh yeah, they've they've won. I'm just thinking because they are going for single unit types because they're just trying to win. They're trying to close it out mm -hmm. and just spam a bunch of units rather than going for tactics, which is a little risky. It is an opening, but. It, wasn't taken advantage of because of the economy difference, and that is game one. So Recursion takes game one. Scouts and Yonk South will have to pick a map, and that map will be something, presumably. Something. I'm assuming. I mean, for all I know, it might not exist, so that could be a problem. Maybe Desert Siege Dry. Yeah. Desert Siege Dry. <laughs> which doesn't exist. Uh, it's a bit too early. <sighs> Well, at any rate, we are going to have one more game, possibly two, that is going to be on a map that has not been chosen yet. So if you're Skazi Yogzatoth, I mean, what are you thinking right now? What, what what type of map do you try and choose to try and make things go your way? 
Well, Skazi Yogg'Sothoth. I mean, the thing with Akinem and Google Frog is that if you, you don't really want to go into a map where the opening position is defend, defensible, because Akinem's gonna go for air. Although, knowing that, you might go for that, assuming they're gonna go for air, and then setting up decent anti-air in order to just counter that. Interesting. I yeah. would not go for Ravaged, for example. Maybe something like Avalanche, which might still go them into it, but at the same time, that's gonna be a micro. That's gonna be about micromanagement, which I think Yogg'Sothoth can do fairly well. Not sure if they can do it better than Google Frog, though. Yeah, that's a really good point. I, I would actually expect to go or uh, for Yogg'Sothoth, Skazi to go for a more macro-oriented map, given Yogg'Sothoth's uh, tendency towards playing free for all and uh, towards larger eco games. That is a good point. But given the fact that last okay, last game actually wasn't a high eco, so that, that is a fair point. We might see something big. It's just that normally even this map is fairly high eco, fairly defensible. Like that True. is aquatic divide. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what they're gonna go for just because they are they're kind of in a tough position. Yeah, I this... said. Oh, that's what we sending colons. There's that... no map you could choose that would make this an easy game. No. To be sure. No, no. The only one I can think of offhand would be... If we're going to go for macro, CCR, obviously. And that's what they're going for. They are, in ah. fact, going for CCR. There we go. All so right, again, well... This is uh, familiar, isn't it? Yep. Whoa. Alright, so we're back to Comic Catcher Redux. I hope you like this map, because the players sure do. I wonder if we'll be seeing another full wave vehicle plop. I doubt it. Especially with Aquanim there. We're going to see probably air coming out of them. Though maybe not. Maybe. Maybe they're going to go for something more defensible. You know, I'd like to see that. It's just Aquanim typically with Google Frog has gone air start alongside right. Google Frog going for something on the ground. That's typically how they go for it. But then again, they might be going for different strategies now. I mean, my analysis is probably out of date on that regard. It seems like it would leave the ground player awfully open uh, if you had another teammate start air against, you know, Scorchers being so popular on this map. Yes, that's a fair point. Scary I mean, one a two-player all-in Scorcher rush against a single commander with a ground factory is, uh, as well, it's a bad proposition for the single player. I... I could see that. I mean, the single player is going to have to micro much harder. But the and we're is, also talking about an all-in, which, I mean, how likely is that even in a game like this? Yeah, with Yogg'Sothoth and Skazi, I don't know. They're probably going to play the long game. That's what I would imagine. That's what I would expect to see. Okay, so... We will, I guess, begin, because the game is loading. You know, I wonder if Google Frog or Aquanu might plop uh, Hovercraft and break the monotony here. Google Frog will. If anyone will, it'll be Google Frog. Mm-hmm. Google Frog's been going for a lot of hover recently. Right. So, like, I was checking their practice games. Actually, I did that on Wednesday cast. And Google Frog was plopping their hovers. Cool. Yep. Well, I hope we see it here. I haven't seen a good dagger ball for a while. Well, normally it's scalpel ball. But, yeah. <laughs> Daggers aren't really a thing anymore. They sort of are, but, yeah, it's not quite what it was once. Wait, why is... Hang on a sec. Something went wonky. Hold on one second, I've got this. Oops. Yeah, that was... That's weird. It was Google Frog and Aquan that won, right? Like, did... I didn't hallucinate that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty okay. sure you're right. Okay. Oh, I just realized the wind counter is backwards, yeah. Don't worry, the wind counter is easily fixed now. <laughs> I've, uh, oh, I... this wind counter! No, no, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's I can handle it. I have handled it, in fact. Just the only downside oh, is man. the spectator panels don't update dynamically, which is something I've put an issue in and probably should just fix. These things kind of light vehicle test. factories so far. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, Google Frog's gone for light vehicles. They haven't gone for anything fancy mm -hmm. like hovercrafts. Save us, Skazi. There we go. A tank factory. Hey, something different. Variety. Kodachis or, or Panthers? Panthers, probably. Although, probably two, one or two Kodachis, then Panthers. Yeah. That's typically yeah. the heavy tank way. That sounds like a good call. Although, the one thing, though, look at the positions. 
I mean, oh, Skazi is super vulnerable. Oh yeah. Yogsot's not. I mean, Yogsot's fine. They're but really, they should have flipped. Skazi should have been the one in the corner right here because heavy tanks need that small defensible location. Like, yeah, that's a really good point. <laughs> yeah, this is bad news for for Skazi here. He's so far out in the open. Yeah, if Skazi was over in the western side of the map where Yogg is, I would be more confident. But at this mm. point, it just feels like if Akram and Google Frog see this, they're going to just focus on Skazi most likely. Because Yogg can't expand that quickly. They're in the corner. But yes, but Skazi is heavy tanks in the open, which is just very inviting. It also puts the burden on Skazi to expand, which is, I mean, maybe going to be difficult enough already given his slow tanks. Uh, not being able to catch up to the Scorchers. Well, yes, of course, that's the other thing. Although, that's what the Kodachis and Panthers are for. So, I wouldn't be too surprised if they just go for that in en masse for the first five minutes. That's typically what you do. I mean, they already have. They have Panthers and Kodachis queued up. So, they're going to go for that. That's their thing. Although, that being said, this Scorcher is going to commit suicide trying to kill the factory. I don't know yeah, why I was so excited a... about that. But, yeah, it, it died. It's just wanted now. to get in there and see some action, probably. The Scorchers I, I think still have a pretty easy... <laughs> they have a pretty easy time against uh, Kadachis, so I certainly want to see the switch into Panthers come pretty quickly. And then hopefully Skaz is going to try and have some really good attrition with these Panthers, try and ball them up, because uh, if he doesn't, that Scorcher Ball is going to outrun him pretty easily. Yeah. The back lines like we saw in the last game. But thankfully for you, your wish is coming true, because Skaz is going for five Panthers, then two Kadachis on loop. Well, there so, you go. It's all good. Everything you want and more. Nice little poke to the southwest from Skazi. This is definitely the way to use a Kadachi. I mean, southeast, but yeah, that's... Well, I got rid of a metal extractor. Open some stuff up. Prevents that constructor from naked expanding, too. Gonna get taken out by the Scorches, unfortunately, but, uh, but that's still, the way it goes sometimes. It, it still instills a bit of respect. I mean, you know, they know that they have to respect the rating. It's not just gonna be a free back expansion. Yep, that's right, and, th and those are two Scorches that are occupied in the back ranks that I'm sure Recursion would rather have out front. Well, one Scorcher, the other one's going to burn to death. Which is even worse. Yeah, so that's not the strongest start from Recursion, but they they are not falling behind too... Actually, they're kind of falling behind an energy. That's going to be a problem. Not surprising, though, Google Frog is very metal aggressive. Their attitude is typically, I'm fine as long as I'm not accessing metal. Which, over the long term, is a correct attitude because eventually they'll be able to spend all that metal and spend it quite quickly in a big burst, and they won't have ever lost any, ultimately. The question is whether or not Yogstoth and Skazi are going to take advantage of the timing in which Google Frog is fairly open, and Recursion in general is fairly open when it comes to their energy. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that is Google Frog's way. Which is a pretty good way. It's just, it does leave in timing. I don't know if Skazi and Yogstoth are aware of that timing, though. And unfortunately for them, only one Panther is up. But fortunately for them, it does outrun the Scorcher, so they should be fine. This I actually see three Panthers out here, but uh, they're doing a pretty good job of trying to keep up with these Scorchers. I'd say they're beating yeah. them. Yeah. Can't it's slight that at all. I mean, that was, that was some nice defense there from Skazi. He really needs to uh, step it up, though, and start expanding a bit quicker, I think. He's been focused yeah. so heavily on defense that uh, he hasn't really been able to capitalize on this open area that he's He's secured. not focused that heavily on defense. One Lotus and one Defender is not focusing heavily on defense. I mean defense with his units rather than being aggressive oh, with Oh, right, yes. Yeah, yeah, Defensive general play style. That, that is a fair point. He is. But even then, only three Panthers, which, while a fair amount, once a couple levelers come out, that's going to be a bit of a problem. And already Overdrive is coming out now. So it looks like Recursion is just going to get the fusion reactor and use that to make up for their power difference. That yeah, that's should, a pretty good plan. That should pull them back. I mean, their production is not great right now. It hasn't been for a little while. They've been doing fine, however, but yeah, that's just it. Now it looks like Skazi's tr trying to drive the pace a bit more. Pushing in here with his Panthers. So we see Aquanum's forced to pull back with his Scorchers. Takes the pressure off of Skazi a little bit and hopefully lets him expand behind this. Well... That would be the idea, yeah, but the thing is, can it? I mean, there's a lot of pressure being applied. There's a lot of pressure, and pretty much any opening is something that Google Frog is Google Frog and Akron are probably gonna take right away. Just that one thing, these three Panthers are in a good position. At least for they're exerting a bit of pressure. Well, they're exerting a 
some territory control, like some influence, making that just a little bit harder for Google Frog and Actum to go about freely. But then again, I don't know if it's going to matter. If they die here, which they won't, so I don't know why I'm even suggesting the possibility, because it's not happening. Akinem's going to be forced to retreat. And as usual, Akinem going for that Caretaker. I thought they had gone out that habit. I don't know if you're aware that Akinem has a bit of a habit where they build a Caretaker for Reclaim. They much prefer using a Caretaker rather than using Builders or using their Commander. Which, hmm. of course, has the slight downside that the Caretaker has to actually be complete. By the way, that's Google Frog. That's not Akinem. What am I saying? Akinem does have that tendency, but that was Google Frog doing it. Never mind. I'm not, I don't know Google Frog to do that necessarily, but apparently they are in this case. Well, there is quite a bit there, so being able to uh, take it up quickly, especially with how far forward it is, I think a caretaker is the right call. Yeah, it's, there have been times where I've seen more Akinem end up throwing away reclaim because they couldn't get the caretaker up before it got destroyed, but they could have gotten a bunch of reclaim off for workers. Sure. Yeah, like, I guess that's the gambit, seconds. isn't it? It it's is, a, it's yeah. A, you, you, spend reclaim, you spend 25 seconds. You spend 25 to 50 off, seconds, depending on your workers, to build the caretaker in order to get the reclaim. But if you only have 15, 20 seconds or so, at most, the caretaker is not going to work. Yep. And this should be fine. Google Fox Commander has got Riot Cannon? Yes, they do. So at this point, this shouldn't be a problem. Google Frog basically has this reclaim field under control, and more and more is getting donated by Skazi and Yogstoth. And the Panthers are getting heavily threatened. I think that Really nice spike by Recursion yeah. doubling up here on these Panthers. Yeah. Excellent job picking them off as nice. they fall out of position. Very really nicely done. Pushes them back. That opens up. That's going to open up about two or three more metal extractors. Which they kind of need. Look at the economy right now. You know, a lot of that's overdrive, but even then, only half of the advantage is overdrive. Recursion pretty much has to reclaim their way back into a solid position right now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially with the caretaker doing all the repairs. I mean, they are behind. They're way behind right now. Yogsoth and Skazi have just been exploding along the map. I see. This is what you were talking about. Like, Yogsoth at the late game. And Skazi's not doing too badly as well. Skazi and Yogsoth have a pretty even split when it comes to metal extractors. They are... Man, they're transitioning to something. Oh, Gunships, that's coming in. Ooh. The question is, are we going to be seeing Yogsoth go for a, over a gradual expansion with Gunships? Or are we going to see them going for a Crow? Try to clear out everything. And Ravens are up for Goofrog as well, so that's... That will be interesting, but I don't know if they're aware of that. I don't think the Ravens have been revealed. And scouting at this point is very difficult. Google no. Frog uh, flew a swift over uh, over Yogsoth's base, so they should know oh, at least that Google okay. Frog has some air up. Yeah, and if Google they know... Frog, likewise, should know that Yogsoth has built this gunship factory as well. Yeah, so if they know about the swift, then they'll know there's something. And they are building Trinus. They're being very defensive. Which is the right call. I mean, they want to get... Really nice Vulture deep here behind Skazi's lines. Google Frog knows exactly what's going on behind here. Yeah, there it is. That, that Vulture... But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing right now is this assault from Google Frog giving Yogstoth tons of metal. How much metal did they give them? Donated about a thousand metal. That was a lot of Scorchers dead. But that's... Yeah, that's still a problem. I mean, Yogstoth and Skazi are ahead economically. That's something that needs to be borne in mind. They're ahead economically. They have great pressure. The mid-line of the map is more or less taken, but Google Frog and... What Google Frog and Akron were holding, they're holding by the skin of their teeth. Basically, that we're, they haven't been attacked yet. Well, okay. Right. Nice. Skazi and Yagsatal have almost the perfect composition here to be dealing with this. At least over on the eastern side, Banisher Panthers, perfect for the Scorchers. On the west side, Yagsatal pushing in with these Slashers is uh, strong enough to hold the territory. And certainly, these Scorchers won't be getting past the stack defenses. Not the stack defenses, no. There's way too many of those. But then the next bomber run should deal with those, I would think. That or deal with the, ban the Banishers directly. And the Scorchers, not actually taking that much damage. Banishers apparently are not as powerful as one might expect. Not in that one shot. I mean, the second shot will kill most of them. But that first shot can still be a problem. And nice damage coming in from Aquanim. They're just not caring. Like, they're going to deal all the damage they can. And not worry sure. too much about anything else. Break stag defense. Break energy. Maybe break metal. Not as big of a priority. Just doing whatever they can to disrupt this economy. Yeah. It'd be nice to dig into behind those caretakers, but it seems like a big ask. 
that actually might not be. The Pillager and Reaper, or sorry, Pillager and Reaper aren't going to be that big of a problem. As long as those Scorchers can dodge it, there's nothing really to deal with this. And it should be pointed out that Yogg's, okay, Yogg's does have Gnats, so it's actually going to be a little bit difficult, but yeah. And Google Frog tearing apart the western side, ripping apart the Crashers, opening that entire side up. Excellent. So at this point, Akinem has torn a nice swath along the eastern side, though that was still kind of arguably metal donation. Western side being cracked open just a little bit, or at least who fucking better solidify their hold along this side. It was not terrible. Although one thing I'm just now thinking about is I wonder... I mentioned about the spires before, about the sky dust. I wonder if people are going to start building fake sky dust, like building spires that have no stardust just to throw <laughs> people off. As a paper tiger? Yeah, that's an interesting idea. Because, I mean, if it's fully visible, but you can't see the unit on it, there's mm -hmm. the mind games. Yeah. At any rate, it does appear that Gulfrog and Aquanim are now into the stalemate position. Right, now it's cut along the side. Now this is where we... You know, you're talking before about how silencers and missile silos are not something you use unless you have a good position. This... May Starting be, to look like a pretty secure position, yeah. Yeah, this may be the position in question. We might be heading into the long game here. Well, or at least heading into Siege Breakers. It'll come down to when they go for Siege Breakers. Don't think Google Frog's that... Well, Google Frog aren't that keen yet. I think they think they can break through this. And It looks like Ravager might be their Siege Breaker. I mean, there's quite a few out here on the field. There are. If they can stun out some of these defenses, or stun out some of these units... Especially mm -hmm. if they can do that, that is going to help a lot, and they have been. And they know exactly what's up. They have the Vulture. They have a really good idea what's going on. The Thunderbird's up too as well, so if they need to stun out, they have Perfect. the tools. So they're in a strong position. They just can't easily... Neither player can really break the other at this point. That's the problem. Now, the one thing I do want to know is what they have planned, what both sides have planned, if they realize it's gone to stalemate. Well, I see Impaler's coming out from Aquanim. That's certainly the right call. Going to be able to tear open a hole here. That combined with the Ravagers, that, that's your follow-up. Yeah, actually, Aquanim's gone for double light vehicles, I think. Yes, they have. Yeah, they're getting <laughs> Scorchers from the main base and getting Ravagers from the proxy. Just for the distance. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting. I mean, that is that is a valid reason, I suppose, to build a that's second a factor the same type. That's a great use of proxy factor, yeah. It's just, you never see that. Mm -hmm. But hey, given that, I mean, it makes sense. Given the speed You difference. see it from time to time in, in the team's room, but certainly not in 1v1 very often. No. It's very but, uncommon yeah, that but you, they would build a second proxy factory of the same unit type. But I mean, the CCR is fairly big, and especially given that they do need to defend the front lines at a moment's notice, mm -hmm. that kind of makes sense. Yep. Perfect, perfect call. But yeah, at this point, we are into trench warfare. It is 1916, Battle of the Sum on the moon. Heading that way. Ah, <laughs> uh, you got me. That was a good one. I... Which is a dental. I gotta figure out what game I'm gonna do for Remembrance Day. Because there aren't, there aren't still aren't enough World War One games, and I really do want to do World War One, but I don't want to do like Red Baron again. So. I don't know. I don't want to repeat. It was like Red Baron and Great War 1918 I've done. I don't know really what else there is. But that's a side note. The main thing is... Well, Break your bust thought, over the west side. Yeah. It was all the fake defenses. Or at least the half-built defenses. But yeah, they know that that spire is fake. Or at least... It doesn't look fake, though. It looks like it was half-built. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's it would be just the size of the Stardust footprint. It's, it's also kind of cute to see that speed bump just in front of it that uh, Google Frog put up to stop the flight vehicles. And, uh, Which, the of course, of doesn't course. stop rapiers. Don't really care much about that. Nope, it needs to be considerably higher to stop rapiers. And actually, they'll just slow them down. This is definitely problematic for Google Frog. He doesn't really have anything here to deal with it. Trying to get this Razor up to deflect him as quickly as possible. But even with the Razor, it's going to be tricky. I think they'd be able to mm. lose about three or four of their number and take out the Razor. Because the Razor is 3,000 health against their, was it 400? Oh, 200 damage shot. Never mind, well, though. It looks like Yogsoth does not want to risk it. Pulling back. I'd say that's the wise decision. He's oh, already busted a hole through here. 
And yeah, the center has also been broken open. The Ravagers are acting as a siege breaker. They are tearing apart the static defenses. And that opens a hole in the center. At this point, yeah, there's a giant hole. Like if you look at the defense map, there there is a clear path to the main base. Oh, why are these Ravagers just idling here, getting torn apart by the Scorches? They don't even need to mess with these levelers here. Just head north. Oh, boy. I think Google Frog wants to play defensive. I think they're figuring, oh, well, I don't want to waste my units. Throw away the metal. And that, yeah, ra that that's a good Thunderbird, point. That Thunderbird j justified it. That, that, that was perfect. Vindicated. That was an excellent, excellent blow. Good work on Google Frog's part to not stun out his own Ravagers as well. Yep. And a second tank factory from Aquanim? Yeah, main base and proxy. They've... They're duplicating uh, their base layout, which is very unusual. Yeah, I'm not sure about the one back here at the main base. Maybe he just forgot that he has one up here at the front. I don't think so, but yeah. I don't know. This one back here doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but uh, this Goliath sure does. Talking about siege breakers. Yep, yeah, that's that's gonna do it. That will certainly help out. Although have some trouble with these Panthers up here, though. That's what I was about to say. It's like, there aren't really a whole lot of heavy units, are there? There's a few Reapers, which it helps. Yeah. Oh, never mind. When I say a few, I mean a dozen. So, yeah, yeah, Goliath was definitely a good call. Never mind. Yeah, unfortunately, despite breaking open the hole in the stag defense, the active defense, the mobile defense, is not going to be just moving away that quickly. And it looks like Goliath's from both sides. I really don't understand why Yogg... Why Acronym's doing this. The only reason you really want a second factory is if the first factory is producing units so quickly that the time it takes for them to get off the platform is greater than the time it takes to build them. Which is not happening with Goliaths. Not, not anytime soon. <laughs> 2200 metal a pop. That is not going to happen. Or any reasonable amount. Like you'd need to have about 2000 metal for that to even be viable as an option. And if it's not plus 2000, I don't even know what would happen. I mean, just... That, I, does that even happen? Like in big teams or FFAs? Does anyone get to plus 2,000? Or even more than I've plus 200? Seen. Shy of uh, maybe be super speed metal. I okay, because uh... I mean, the highest the highest I've ever been able to just make it go by playing around. And it looks like the speed bump doesn't hurt bots, so so much for that. But the highest I've been able to get it going for something just messing around with singularity reactors in overdrive is about two or 300 metal. Yeah. Yeah, I, and even that is uh, preposterously high. Oh, yeah. So, you're never going to have that with Double Factory. So yeah, I'd be sure curious to hear what the reasoning is. Uh, I mean, producing Maybe? Goliaths from both factories, that just... Well... I don't understand. The one thing I could see is Akuna might be thinking that this attack that Skazi is about to perpetrate was about to be perpetrated, and that yeah. they're going to lose that factory up front. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I'm surprised to see that this attack from Skazu was so delayed. He had so many Reapers here. I mean, really just had to poke for it a bit to see that Aquanim's defense is going to crumble under this. I mean, yeah, there's really nothing for Aquanim to do. Yeah, His best hope would maybe be these Scorchers, but there's enough Banishers here to uh, dispatch them without any issue. That combined with the Panthers to tie up the Goliath, there's... Uh, this whole eastern side is about to be uh, crumpled up into a small ball of tinfoil. Yeah, foil. that sucks. Would have been a really good time for a Silencer, like five minutes ago. Oh, I stand corrected. Skazi's actually retreating for some Why reason. Why are they retreating? Well, it doesn't matter. They've yeah, won. No matter. But <laughs> So on to game two. Sorry, game three, rather, between these two teams. And I'm going... Oh, boy. I hope so. Just because I know that Google Frog and Akronim know they can do some powerful things in that map. Well, that was an interesting showing from the Heavy Tank Factory, because we don't normally see the Heavy Tank Factory that often. They're they're good, they're just not that popular right now. Yeah, that exactly. Was that was risky, power. too. Oh, oh, for sure. Like that that position, but Akin and Goofog never managed to take advantage of it, unfortunately. It got set up properly. So that, that still worked, but man, that was a risk. Still not sure it was worth it, though. I still... I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't feel like Skazi uh, capitalized on it as well as he could have, but, uh, well, I mean, they did end up winning, so. Yeah. That's what to say. All right, well, game three, where is that going to be? That is going to be in a place where games happen. But like I said, probably going to be Avalanche or some other map like that. Maybe Ravaged. But at least CCR is out of the way. <laughs>
Well, for this particular one. <laughs> I don't know if we're going to see that again, though, because it's going to be... It's going to be Forever and Clone versus the winner of this. Although we see Skazi and Yogstoth winning this, we might see that. I don't know. I almost think we wouldn't because both players know the other side wants to get the long game going and as a result would not want to use CCR. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But we'll see. So at this point, are they going to pick? I guess Google Frog and Akinim are currently counseling, or currently figuring out what's going on. They're currently conversing totally about that. Currently a little mumble huddle, just trying to figure <laughs> out what to do. And Small map, I would hope. I mean, Avalanche sounds right. Something in that vein. I could see that. I could definitely, like I said, that's just a matter of that's their strength, is the micro. Mm -hmm. Although their strength is also in communication, but I don't know if that's necessarily a direct strength that they have over Skazi and stuff. There's no tech strat, so I'm assuming both teams are using Mumble. Yeah, it looks like it. At this point, still think that I can goof fuck to have the small map. I was kind of so curious like to see which one. I'm just, I'm just sitting here and so focused on the text on the chat. Mm hmm. All right. Well, what? I don't think we can see a discussion on how Dominatrix is terrible and awesome at the same time, which is about right. Yep. Perfectly right. Yeah. Dominatrix is the best bad unit. And the worst good unit. <laughs> it's a terrible piece of awesomeness. But yeah, it's extremely situational, so it's I can see why people would would have both opinions at the same time. I haven't used them recently, but uh, I have been the victim of a few dominatrices of late. Yes, yes you have. <laughs> I saw those games. Uh. They show dominatrices. Intersection, another good choice. There we go. Interesting right. map. This is uh yeah, this is right along the lines I was thinking. Somewhere where Google Frog and Aquanim can take some initiative and try and secure an early advantage. Also, Google Frog plays in this all the time. Mm hmm Google Frog knows this map. So if there's any map that's gonna work for them, it's this one. And also, also given the starting positions, air start is totally viable. Ah. So Akinem can go for air. That is a good point. Yeah, that's interesting. That could be helpful with the fast expansion, too. And it seems like a good map to maybe punish Yogg-Zatoth or uh, Skazi if they get too defensive or, like, how do I say it? Too passive, I guess, in their expansion. Mm -hmm. Because you can secure the corners and then so easily cut off a uh, slow team like that. Which I'm sure they're planning on doing because what else are they going to do? I mean... Right. Yeah, I would expect know. to see... At least one of these corners get rushed. Possibly both. So, with that, we have... We have a likely strategy. We have a way this is going to go. Right. Well, Pokeballs we'll from Google Frog. Oh, okay, it's not loaded up for me yet. <laughs> hard drive takes forever sometimes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to get uh, that solid-state hard drive, man. I That's have a solid-state hard drive. My OS isn't on it. Oh. I got it second. Got it. Yeah. My, yeah, videos, my videos are recorded to the solid-state hard drive. Mm hmm All right, so now we are up. And yeah, so what I'm thinking is... Oh, Akinem's going for jump bots. Interesting choice. Yeah, Not I like what I expected. It. Is Skazi going to go for air? Yogg-Sat's going for light vehicles, which is not unexpected. This map does support them fairly well, but it's also quite small, so cloakies do work. But yeah, the corners, that's the thing. These corners are going to be the biggest thing that's going to work probably in Recursion's favor. And Akinem going for double jump bot factory. Great. <laughs> Well, 
they're certainly loving their double factories. I you know. Oh, it's good to have a spare. Yeah, that's is this uh, his proxy factory is the front one because yeah. it's close to the front. Oh yeah, yeah. Of course. I mean, it, it. You have to have your proxy factory. Directly in front of your first factory, it's the important part. Uh, I wish that the game over call in was fixed. Anyway, so yeah, apparently they're having issues, but yeah, we're good. It's 1 1. 1 1 for both sides. Are you going to start up or not? Quit complaining about the wind counter because. No. No. About that. There we go, Kaskazi. All right. We have you hear now. I'm complaining about people complaining about the wind counter. <laughs> Damn it! Past me. Shut up. I'll show them. Past me. You can never say no to future me. But that means that I'm beholden to. Oh no! Come on! Did it seriously just exit? Did uh your interface ex or your game exited? Yeah. What? Ugh. I have no idea what just happened. All right, well, I'll try to cover you while, uh, while you're down. Okay, cool, thanks. So go for it. Sure, a few glades coming out from Google Frog. Looks like they're heading towards the western side, glades from Skazi as well, towards the northeast. Bit of a meet up here in the center. There we go, and a run by. Just about to get the factory scouts. Raider engagement so far. No one's actually made it up the ramps quite yet. Looks like some westward expansion from Google Frog. Often I'm heading out north. Yeah, Yogg'Sothoth and Skazi actually keeping their commanders back at- Oh no, actually, uh, looks like Yogg'Sothoth is moving me now to that southwestern corner as well. Okay. So, I am back in. Alright, sorry about that everyone. Not sure why the game decided that someone had won, but it hadn't. They, they really hadn't. So yeah, so the Glaives were going around scouting. Is that what you said? Yep, yep. Just uh, scouting and raider engagements. Okay. You didn't good. miss much. Yeah. 90 I mean, seconds into the game. One minutes. Although one minute on a map like intersection is a long time. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> and we are seeing that quick rush to the corner. Wow, two constructors hanging out there from Google Frog. That seems especially greedy. That's not terribly unusual. I mean, it's a team game. They want to make sure that they really get it. One of them is going to build metal extractors, the other one's going to build static defense, most likely. Although they might double up on static defense just to get it up faster. Not that they have the money for it. Are they on low priority? Their factory is... No, Google Fox factory is not on low priority. Neither is Aquanum. Aquanum going for that quick placeholder, which... Against light vehicles, I can totally understand. Mm -hmm. Perfect they, call. Yeah. I mean, that's a jump bot factory in a nutshell. It's controlling the mobility. What are these... Okay, they are double up, doubling up on the static defense. And that was probably the best idea, because this is going to be clutch. Yeah. If they had low pro Oh, yeah, those glaives. That's the only thing buying the time needed. Nice timing. Unfortunately, that commander is in the way. Why is it not... It does enough to scare him back, though. All right. Yeah, surprisingly. Oh, uh, here we go. This slash will clean up the LT. Though. Oh, unless nope. it blunders forward. No, no. I, I think Yogstoth slashers are just suicidal. Oh, boy. I, I think they're really just sick of life. I, I'm... It's sad. Oops. Yep, that was a bit of a misstep there. Yeah, Yogstoth really needs to worry about their army morale. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's becoming a problem. Yeah, it's uh, clearly some issues are starting to manifest. Yeah, they're just... They, they'd prefer anything but to serve Yogstoth. It's very ungrateful, too, because he just made them. You know? That is the fastest turnaround for Rebellious AI ever. But it looks like, on the other hand, Skazi's forces are nice and loyal and going around the back to deal with this. They shouldn't have much of an easy time doing so, though. They don't really have an opening for this. Looks like they're just trying to block off in case more workers come in, or in case workers try to greedily take that metal extractor. Skazi's yep. just making sure everything's 
honest. Well, I mean, if he's not going to try and secure that corner himself, that's a, at least a good least you can do effort. Having yep. a single raider there to try and prevent at least a naked expansion. Yeah, Aquanim is going to be taking this pretty easily in a moment. Glaive's coming through the center, but uh, there's honestly not much value in securing the center yet. Maybe if they can, maybe if they can consolidate, set up a lot of defenses to try and control the mobility, like you mentioned. But uh, these jump jets are going to be able to get around it pretty easily. Oh, control mobility yeah. is something that jump bots do between placeholders and the way that everything jumps around. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how much Skazi and Yogg's are going to be able to control anything like that. Although, given that's a two v two map, taking the center may not be a terrible idea this early. I mean, it's faster. Like it's the timing yeah, for everything true. are accelerated as a result of the, of the double team. And maybe they could capitalize on the speed of the light vehicle factories combined with control of the center so they have the fastest route for some fast in and out attacks. Maybe that, you know, that seems like a tenable strategy, but I feel like uh, Recursion securing these corners here is going to give them more of a fire base, a uh, better position to launch attacks from, and then, of course, the economy that comes with it. Mm hmm. Well, that and they're going to be flanking outright. Mm hmm. And if Akinem does the proxy thing like last game, that's even better. Yeah, and if uh, Yogg-Zatoth or Skazi overcommit into the center here, they're going to be very open to a flank through these corners. So that's a good point. Of course, Skazi trying to deal with that right now, getting that set up, but that defender? That's it? That's all you got? Mm. Well, defender and ride cannon versus a ride cannon, and Skazi does have the tougher commander. Or no, they're equal health. So this fight is pretty even. Although the placeholder is not... Come on, puppy. Puppy and placeholder. Well, actually, the placeholder's not going to matter much. That's the one thing. There's not Something needs to have the range advantage to deal with this. Like a defender. That works. Sure, some LLTs, depending on how long you can keep that uh, commander place held. Well, oh, wow. They're going to be it's able to keep it place held until something comes in. Single-handedly? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah, no, no. Placeholders lock down everything in one... It, it, one placeholder will lock down everything. I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. Well, this is a very hairy position for the commander, then. I mean, a few LLTs and... Uh... That's for walling. To make sure the defenders can't get in, but even then, it's not enough. Oh. So I think akonim has got this. Yeah, <laughs> Skazi's commander's gonna go down, and Skazi and Yalakta only have 28 metal. Heroic placeholder. Yep, and that warrior... Nice movement by the by Skazi to get that warrior into position, and nice movement by Akonim to make sure that the warrior can't... Okay, they don't even know wow. about the warrior. They're just, they were just moving correctly, and that did it. Beautiful. Down four metal. Ouch. I mean, down four metal, not in a favorable position. Google Fox taking the southwest completely. The center is theirs, but so what? Yep. And the sky dust, because that's what they do. There we go. Yeah, recursion in a great position, needless to say. These glaives in the center, it, uh, I'm not too sure how much they're going to be able to do between the firewalker that's going to try to thin them out. Warrior down to the southwest, and then all the point defenses over to the eastern side. They, they, I don't see anywhere that they can get through, so these glaives seem like just dead metal. Well, maybe. It, I think, I mean, it's probably you're right. It's just, there's this tiny chance that they get micro perfectly to avoid those issues. Like, in between yeah, firewalker be shots. By, though. Oh, yeah, no, it'd be... It would be a clutch. It would be a tournament moment. Like it would just be Miraculous. the moment of the year. Uh huh. But I'm not saying it's not going to happen, or at least it couldn't happen. It could happen. Probably won't, but it could. I'll say it's not going to happen. I'll I'll take that chance. Yeah, odds are it won't. It's just you know it's not impossible. This game does allow for that. At least given the unit composition that Google Fox thrown out there. Although their commander is right, can that might just stuff it completely. And it looks like the run by is being attempted, and you are right. Uh, that was that was a complete waste. They walked right into the warrior, and all died. Just all of them died ignoble deaths. That was disappointing. And Yogg's yeah. commander, not so much. That's <laughs> the size tried. They've got to be feeling a little uh, crammed in here at this point, especially with the Zeus is starting to creep through the center. By the way, the center's been almost completely cleared out. Oh, yeah. All of the stack defense is dislodged. They have no position. Their only advantage right now is recursion has been... They haven't been producing very much, so the economic advantage has not translated into production. So military... 
like at this point is a issue, but not as big of an issue as it could be. Hmm. But still, it's an issue. Yeah. So at this point, it looks like it's just going to be a clear shot to the finish. Anything coming up here? There's hammers, but that's only so much. Impalers and hammers are... I can see where they're going for them, but I don't... I don't think that's going to work. They're just going to get torn to shreds. Mm -hmm. Unless what they're trying to do is tear apart the eastern side, or the western side. They tear apart one of these sides, rip apart the expansion, and then try to hold off the military while destroying the economy. Yeah, try to get through that way, but uh, that's not happening. That seems almost impossible at this point, given that uh, recursion controls the center. Yeah, that doesn't help. Not to mention the hammers are not doing that. They're going off to yeah. the center. No, they're trying to be anti skirmishers, and that's kind of pointless when you're dealing with assaults. Like you need skirmishers in the first place. So I think this is just, yeah, this is it. So Google Fog and Aquanim are probably going to advance onto the winners' finals. Up against Looks Pluin like and it. Anarchid, which means we probably will see CCR one more time. Pluin and Forever. Yeah, Pluin and Forever are going to go for that if they lose. Although yeah, first... I'm really excited. It should be a good match. Yeah, although I think the first map is Turnian, which is an FFA map. Oh, oh, oh. Because that... Because why not? I guess... Anyway, nice use of the jack there. But overall, is this is this is over. Yep, pretty much just uh, waiting for the Northwestern team to figure that out. I really like this placeholder jack combo. It's it's uh, obviously a really high micro combination, but it's so powerful when you get it to work right. Well, it makes sense. I mean, the jack can jump in. The placeholder can just keep everything in place, so the jack can stab it to death. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. Although I think really the combo is meant to be placeholder firewalker. Right. Like that is the clearest combo. Everything else kind of works, but tends to be a bit self-destructive in the process. Like, everything has to fall into the black hole with the thing it's trying to kill. Yeah, that's a good point. Although, thankfully, no one's just mindlessly walked units into a black hole. It's been... In everything that's gone to a black hole has been intentional on the part of the jump bot player, not just throwing out black holes and then units just deciding to walk in because it looks so inviting. Right. Because, I mean, I, you know, it's it's inviting, it's kind of dark and warm and cozy, I guess. I can't guess. imagine a black hole is terribly warm, is it? Well, I mean, there's a massive energy differential, so it probably gets really hot at some point. Huh. I mean, yeah, I guess you have you're to right. consider the fact that, well, the gravity well differential between the event horizon and the singularity is probably going to... I'm sure it, I'm sure it's not particularly cold. Yeah, I don't know. I've never been. Well, I imagine because you are still in this universe that you probably haven't <laughs> been in a black hole. Like, that would be a thing. If, if you had gone to a black hole, we wouldn't be talking right now. That or you'd have a massive popularity just you'd be just on every scientific documentary show ever. Probably every time. You'd be the news of the world. You went through a black hole, came out the other side. And I guess thought it was so boring because he came back here. Probably not much going on. It's apparently just very hot and dark. Yeah. Oh yeah, not to mention the if there's an accretion disk, that accretion disk is probably from, you know, star hot matter. <laughs> so yeah, that that's kinda deadly too. Speaking of deadly, this giant glaive Zeus ball driving in through the center here. Yeah, that's Should well. Should put us out of our misery. <laughs> if it wasn't dead before, if Skazi and Yogg's stuff weren't dead yet, they are now. There we go. And you, in case you didn't see it, Yogg's top yep. actually controlled Deed as commander on the way in. Oh, there. they controlled Deed? I couldn't even tell. They just blew up. I mean, I, maybe they were trying to burst out the Zeus's, but they there's not enough burst damage. Yep. That works against Glaives, not against Zeus's. So now this is it. Now we're at the end of this game, and on to the winners' finals. Surely. Which will be recursion versus mean machines. Oh, I'm so excited. I know, this should be good. It's a good matchup, yeah. And are they gonna finish off or not? Come on, clean up you two. Or is or are they gonna they better not wait for that sumo. 
Akron's got that sumo up, and it's just that's gonna take a while. Yeah. There we go. There All we right. Go. Now, surrender from Yox Athanasi. Recursion Versus takes it two to one. So Yox Athanasi go off to the losers bracket, and Recursion goes off to fight against Klun and and Forever in the winners finals, which should be on Turnian, I think. Double check that. It is. Yep. Semifinals, which is winners' finals and losers' finals, is on Turnian. Well, yeah, I'm one. excited to see how this plays out. Yeah, my guess is it's going to be wonky. Just because. It's going to be a little wonky. Map. You better believe. I wouldn't be surprised. All right. So. Now that's up. Well, once that gets up, I mean, we have to wait for them to actually start the game. Hey. Yeah, maybe a good time for me to step away for just a couple minutes. I'll be back um, probably just two to three minutes, get some coffee, a little oh, bit of water. okay. You go do that, and then I guess I'll have to do that afterwards. So we'll take it in shifts. <laughs> I'm All right, thirsty. well, are you, are you sure you don't want to just go now before they start? Oh, yeah, I guess I could as an intermission. Yeah, I'm just going to intermiss for a sec, so stay tuned.